guess it's quarter to now. I can start. So, you guys enjoying Drupalcon? Enjoyed Drupalcon? Oh, come on. Have you enjoyed Drupalcon? Yeah! Excellent, excellent. Alright, so, continuous integration will solve everything. I think. Hopefully. Hey! Uh, my name is Martin Mo. Uh, I am a Drupal developer. I've been doing it for about five years. That's me right there. About me, if anyone knows about it. And uh, Twitter, Drupal.org. Go. Uh, I joined CAP last year, where I did a lot of this work on continuous integration. Got a lot of experience with uh, large development teams working together and why continuous integration is very important on large teams. So a little history first, quickly. Um, the processes that continuous integration use have been around for, yeah, since the beginning of computer development, com programming. Um, I found some reports about the IBM when they were developing the OS 360, um, built their system four times a day. I have no idea how terrible that would be on that kind of a system, but maybe it worked. Um, but in later years, extreme programming and agile have kind of brought continuous integration into a fully blown process and uh, a defined end-to-end -end system. And specifically, Martin Fowler and Kent Beck um, are two prominent names there. Uh, Martin Fowler has written a great, great article about this, continuous integration, what it is, and how, it, how it's used. Uh, I recommend you read it. It probably is the one, uh, one true article about it, in short. So, yes, that's from his article. Continuous integration. It's a software development practice where members of a team integrate work frequently, usually daily, leading to multiple integrations a day. What he also later says is that continuous integration then causes integration to become a non-event. As in, it happens, you don't care about it, it, it you get a report back saying your code's good, your code's bad. Um, as in the word continuous, it's never ending, so it's all time going on. However, within that cycle, you still have start and stop points. So um, every day, for instance, it might be doing, I don't know, 10 times a day, you might have a continuous integration run. And at the end of each run, you'd see a report coming out. And then you can add some new code, have it rerun. That's a new starting point. So who uses CI? Us, developers. Yeah, actually, how many are developers in here? Wow, awesome. Site builders. Hey, managers, project managers. Anyone that left out? Themers, oh, sorry, yes, themers, sorry. <laughs> Excellent, cool. So, yeah, developers um, use continuous integration. We use it locally on our machine. We run a build script that builds our site. That's con considered continuous integration. Uh, when we check in code into an uh, SCM, that's part of continuous integration because then it goes into being code reviewed. Site builders use it because they can easily build a new site, mock around, do whatever they want, and not worry about the fact that they can mock up the site completely, destroy it, rebuild it in a split second, and just go on about their life. It, it makes life a lot easier for site builders as well. Managers love it because they get an overview of what's going on in the project, how is the code how is the health of the, the, the feature you're doing, a application you're making. So, all in all, continuous integration is a very good thing for everyone, really. So, how many have seen this? You know, um, if you're a single developer, clone your code, maybe two, three developers, all right. Clone your code, hack your code, so it's the patch, someone reviews it, and is it a good patch? Yes, you watch and repeat if it's a no, Maybe that guy comes over and clubs you over the head with a hammer. Hopefully not the hammer, but... So, this works. This, this works in a small team, right? This works when you're three, four developers 
works fine. You talk to each other. You're around one table, maybe. What happens when you scale it? Let's say you have this. I love my artwork. Huh? Let's say you have this. So you're a senior developer. You have five developers offshore, and they are working on your module. You're responsible for a feature, an application on the site. They work away, and all the communication they have with you is instant messenger, email, a video conference call at 10 o'clock in the morning every day. And that doesn't even then count for the maybe six, seven hour difference between you, right? So when your communication line is this thin, because you don't actually have that human interaction between you, how, how, how can you get that same kind of communication that you do when you're only five people? And that's why continuous integration is important, because it helps a lot. So, this is your group, right? This is one kitchen, you're responsible for this kitchen. There's 10 others. And they all talk together through IM. How do you, how, how do you handle that one? Cool, eh? XKCD. Good code. We uh, usually like to get in somewhere in between there. We, we'd love to get somewhere in between there where it's between fast and right, yeah? Right code. Code well. Done. No. You know the picture. You, you've all. How many of you have been here? Yes. Poor good code. So why UCI? It improves the overall view. Wow, that came out actually a lot worse than I thought it would. Uh, it improves the overall view. So you can see further. You can see further into the future of your project. You can get a better overview of how your code is, the health. Makes goals easier. Like I said, future. You know where you are now. You can easily say where you're going to be uh, by knowing that your code's working or not. Quality assurance. So, those are the time when continuous integration, they talk about continuous integration. They always talk about simple tests and QA, right? Quality assurance in a in Drupal is an interesting beast. Um, you need to pass some tests, right? You have the status of those tests passing, and you set the flag in the ground. But how do you know everything on your site works? Are you going to sit down and click every single link and just hope? And just, you know, usually you you throw it out there and you, you, you really hope, right? You, you don't know every single link unless you have, I don't know, 100 people sitting around all day long clicking links. It might happen. So where to start on this? Where, where do you start with this monolithic task? And it's Empire State Building, by the way. Wow. That's got, that guy has got, you know, sitting there, out on there. No thanks, I'm all right. Build. You start with your build. You start with scripts. Here are some ones to talk about when uh, people say continuous integration. These are some of the ones that come to mind, at least when it comes to the PHP world. Uh, my colleague, Marcus Deglos, was talking about Capistrano, Webistrano. It kind of um, is between service and build scripts, because you can define things in Webistrano, and, but you can also have it run the same things. Um, Thing is an excellent ant clone, so in some ways. It, you can define a lovely XML um, layout and it will run it to tar content and you get actually decent status results. I'll show some thing XML soon after this. You can write it all in PHP. Gives you great flexibility. But it's kind of like writing your own CMS again. You know, you were sitting at home, thought, yeah, I'll write my own CMS. That's a great idea. I think I came to my third one before I felt, oh, God, this is terrible. <laughs> Drupal, yes. So, now you have your build script. Josh, make two. 
sort of build script. You have your build script. Servers. You need something to orchestrate it. You need something to go off every day re relentlessly, no problem at all. Just run it and tell people what's going on. On top of the list, I'm putting Jenkins, mainly because it's been around uh, as Hudson for quite a long time. Uh, some, when they got bought by Oracle, Oracle decided, ah, well, Hudson, that's our name. We'll uh, not let you have that anymore. So they forked off and created Jenkins, which is pretty much Hudson. You'll even find Hudson in the words Jen inside Jenkins some places. Cruise control, not the driver one. Uh, have not used it at all, sorry to say. Um, heard some great things about it. The UI looks really nice. Build bot, Python based one. And uh, it's the UI is okay. I wouldn't put it in front of a first time user. Go on Wikipedia, just look up continuous integration, you'll find a massive list of servers that will do all the same tasks and a lot of them proprietary. Uh, Martin Fowler wrote one for ThoughtWorks called Go. So, now that you've got your build script and your server ready, what's next? Well, now you need to create those st tests, right? Those status reports. The things that managers love to see and the things that us developers really need to know what we're doing wrong. Simple test. I hope everyone knows this one. Anyone? Not know it? Heard of it? Yeah, cool. Everyone's heard of it. Drupal simple test. Write them. In every module you make, write a simple test, please. It makes the work for guys like me who have to you know, run these tests all the time much easier if there is one there. Selenium. Selenium is a cool tool. It's pretty much uh, automated human eyes in some ways. You can sit down, install Firefox, install Selenium plugin, and click around, and it will record all of it. It's kind of like a glorious macro script. Um, but what's really cool is when you get into gridded Selenium. Sorry. Um, so that you can have a massive grid of machines all running different OSs, all running different versions of the browser. And they all will then, Selenium will then automatically check on each of these browsers, right? So that you will get back a report saying this pixel is not where it's supposed to be or, or this image is not where it's supposed to be. You can get really, really good status reports from Selenium about what's wrong with your actual graphical output. Simple test checks your HTML. It's all right. Selenium actually tests what the browser shows you. PHP mess detector. How many of you heard of this? Ah, right. It's not completely unknown yet. PHP mess detector is kind of a. Um, it checks for security holes. Checks for. At least that's what they said. It checks for. Uh, it checks for kind of stupid things you do in PHP code. It will look at your code and go like, "You're stupid. You've done it wrong. Redo it." It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of these you add to the arsenal after a while. Once you've got the two top ones done, you start adding mess detector. It's kind of a developer's tool. But it goes into continuous integration. It goes into the Jenkins server. Jenkins runs it each time and says, if you're stupid or not. Coder. In Drupal. Coder module. You guys using it? Everyone using it? Hopefully. Yep. Cool. It... Uh, you all know what it does, I'm, I'm not going to go into it. XHProf. So, your code is running. It's running great, it works, it's got all the features you want. Is it running performant? So, your page takes 10 seconds to load. I've seen it. I've seen 30 seconds even. Why? Why does it take 10 seconds to load? How do you track that one down? I mean, Drupal's got some built-in tools. Yeah, they work. But what if it's in the boot script? Or what, what if it's other places? Or what, what if it's not even in the Drupal? What if it's all the parts of uh, of the PHP when you're going off to the database? All kinds of things. 
XHProf was written by the guys at Facebook. Don't, don't listen. It's all right. Don't worry. It's quite good, actually. Um, it's straight into the devil module now. <coughs> and you literally install it, you point devil module to it, and it goes off and is happy. And you can easily, on each page load, you'll get up a link, click it, it will show you each function, how long time they took in the CPU, and how much memory they used. I'm sorry to say, my Jenkins VM died, so I was going to show you XHProf, but my Jenkins VM died, like literally last night. I've been hacking my way at it, and it's annoying the li living daylight out of me. Xdebug, you want to step through your code? How many of you have tried to step through PHP code? Cool, excellent. You guys are actually using, you know, tools that are helping you. This is good. You're not just putting in breakpoints and exit and Xdebug. It's actually got some performance tools as well, and it's got code coverage tools, strangely enough. Um, it will allow you to step through code. And NetBeans has a great uh, interface to it. Uh, I've never managed to get Eclipse working with it. And there's some others out there as well. PHP CPD. Have any of you heard it before? Wow, two, three. PHP copy paste detector. So, you have copy and pasted code. It will tell you. Or not you, someone else. It will tell you. You can go with a hammer now and hit them over the head. It's great running it sometimes, and you just go like, why? So, that was all the tools. Let's move on again. So, in continuous integration, the idea is to do it often, right? There are a few, three short mantras, so to speak, of this. It has to be repeatable. It doesn't matter what steps you think are complicated it's always repeatable and it has to be repeatable and it has to be automated repeatable you can't have a human interface going into it and clicking some buttons it has to be able to run at any time if you have a database dump coming back every day and you're deleting all the old ones then keep some of the old ones uh, you need to be able to run it at any point at any time Otherwise, it's pointless in really having it because you might have checked some code that was, I don't know, five hours old. You've checked in a bunch of developers offshore and a bunch of developers here have checked in loads of code. What the hell do you do now? There have to be known steps. Don't use black boxes. Don't use something you don't can't look inside and actually know what it's doing. Um, it can be scary. If, you, if, if you're using something, if you're using some magical tool that gives you loads of interesting results that you actually have no idea what it's doing inside. So, yeah, it has to be known steps. Right, configuration. I'm not going to talk much about it. I'm just going to tell you something about it because there's been plenty of talks this week about configuration. There's been plenty of talks about deployment. Developers, hands off. You're not allowed to touch configuration when the site is built. No one on your team, except for site administrators, are allowed to touch a site when it's built. It doesn't matter how complicated, you can code it in. Hook update, features, SQL scripts. But the point is, this is why the repeatable. If you have to go into the site to click some button somewhere or set some SMTP host or something like that, it's not repeatable anymore. Continuous integration is broken. You're stupid. <laughs> so, very simple. Just, if, if you ever think, all oh, right, I have to go, stop. Configuration. I'm going to come back to it again. I'm going back to it. Configuration has to be able to work across multiple environments. I mean, if you have one environment, you don't really need continuous integration. Uh, if, if, if you're running it from your local machine, uh, you can try. I mean, why not? Run continuous integration, have it built on your local machine every day, and it could work. Don't really need to worry about configuration too much. 
if you have one site, good for you. You have got a bit further. Um, multiple sites in configuration gets interesting. All right? So you have a few sites here. And you have different environments. This is actually quite a few. I've seen like a 10, I think, was scary. That's your local dev machine. You have to be able to connect the site A configuration with the local dev machine. So in Thing, for instance, you can do this easily. You have properties files. They can override each other. You can set a drush to automatically go through the properties files and pick up certain properties to use as your site configuration. Then same for the environment. I know this is in Drupal 8, loads of talk about this. I haven't followed it too closely, I'm sorry. Same thing for testing. This works in Drupal 7. So. Same thing for testing. And But now you have to be able, you have to check in that code. Both of these have to be checked in. Because the next developer has to be able to come along and just run the script and instantly have the same environment as you. Same thing for testing. You have to check that code in. The configuration has to be in code. Has to be able to go to not. Production. Now it gets interesting in production. So if you're moving into production from testing, hopefully in testing and production they're the same. But they might not be. You have to be careful. Because you if you accidentally check in some configuration that you know enables everyone to edit everything. Yeah. So yeah, just a few things. So, handling the traffic. You guys think I'm going to talk about traffic shaping now or something, don't you? Right? Well, sort of. This, I like it. So what if your offshore team, you have 50 offshore people, 60, 70. They're all checking in code all the time. While you're asleep, they're checking in code. You, you yeah, you're talking about unbelievable amounts of commits. You come in in the morning, run SVN up or git pull. You sit there for a little while, and you don't. You can go dig through the log. I tried a few times. It was terrible because the interfaces for these logs aren't exactly beautiful, and you 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 don't know 100% what what all the changes are, right? And you're the senior developer, remember? Garrett. How many ever heard of it? How many have used it? No one? Really? Well, you should. It's a Git repository. So it's, you know, if your project is on Git, good. I'm sorry, SVN. I looked around. I couldn't find one equivalent. Sorry. It's kind of like the Alassian stack where you got fisheye. But there's differences. It's also a code review tool. So like I said, it's like fisheye. However, Gary is different. And I'll show you why now. I'll, I'm, I'm actually going to do a live demo. Scary. So this is just annoying. Where the heck is my mouse? It's disappeared. Wow, Linux's multi display handling is lovely. So, here you go, you got a few uh, projects going on here. No, that one, no. So, we could start with some build files. Can you guys see that? Too small? Can you guys see the back? Can't see it at all? Cool. I'm going to try to make it bigger. How do you do that in Eclipse? Sorry. <laughs> going to make it easier. Going to use something I actually know a lot better. Uh, no, I'm not. Yes, I'm not. Wow, like I said, it's terrible. Sorry? Control plus. I tried that one. Control plus. It's fantastic, isn't it? Almost there. So, I think Control Plus works on this one. 
You guys see it now? The back? You guys see it at the back? Cool. So, this looks like an ant script, right? A few differences. We got that one there. We got a few things here. So this is pretty much a thing script. You have your drush command, which is in the Drupal community. It's a add-on to thing. So you have to go and get that one if you want to use thing. It works really, really well, even though it's still in sandbox mode. You can really do a lot in thing. You can create directories. You can set permissions. And it has some cool concepts around it. Uh, targets. So you have to, for instance, to first prepare your prepare. Sorry, my mouth is not connected to my brain anymore. First, have to prepare your directories, right? So you run Josh Make, and I want it to be a development version, so I've got working copy restriction. And then you have to install the site, and literally the site install. It's easy. Thing makes your life easier. It really, really does. So, is it a bit like Puppet? Um, yes and no. It can deploy files and it can configure. That's not a problem. But it's really not for system configuration. It's for Drupal and PHP projects. So you don't... Yeah, I'll, I'll take questions at the end. I've still got plenty of time. Don't worry. I'll take questions at the end. Try to remember them. Write them down. Something. I'm almost done. So, let's move on quickly to Garrett. So, let's make a code change that I want to check in. I'm going to go ahead and make a change to my make files. Although they're not really that great, there's nothing in there really. I want a... Eh. What, 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 what module should I get? Suggestions. Oh, come on. Favorite module. Someone. Quickly. Sorry? Coder. Okay. Cool. Coder. And I want to put in my software. I can show a thing wrong as well. I'll do that afterwards. And I'll put in control. Sorry if you can't see this. I will blow it up. It's a make file. You guys have seen a make file before, I hope. Really. Save that. Go over to my... Again, come on. With Linux screen handling, you're <coughs> terrible. So, yeah, how many of you used Git and how many of you use SVN? <laughs> <laughs> so, how many of you used Git? Cool. How many of you used SVN? How many feel comfortable with Git? Cool. So you know a bit about how the uh, branching and how the check-in can work sometimes with the Git repository. Nice. So uh, just, I just changed my make file, right? Start this. Yep, yeah, modified the base make. Cool. And I do a. I can never remember this one. Git push. Actually, no, I don't. Sorry. My bad. I do a git commit first, of course. I'm stupid. Already I'm messing up. It's amazing. Message. Uh, changed. All right. That's it. Now, this is the, the interesting one about Garrett. So you have your push, you push it through a SSH. You push it to a custom port. So Garrett runs its own SSH server. And there are a few reasons for that, mainly because it's all in Java, so it's all encapsulated. So when you run Garrett, you can have all your Git users only in Garrett, and you don't have to create them Linux accounts or use any other means. And it's very, very easy to register new accounts. It's literally a Google account. Or you can use your own authentication method. You create an account, you put in your pub key, that's it. You can start checking your code. It's like GitHub. It will be like running your own GitHub on your own machine, except it's not really GitHub. So I want to push into 
make files. I want to push my head into the references for master. Go. Of course. I'm using a. I thought it was smart. Alright. Don't fail. Don't fail. <laughs> wow. You don't believe. The number of times I've actually checked in code and it's worked fine. Oh, hey, there we go. Just my computer being a bit slow. So, your normal uh, Git check in. It even gives you a link to the new changes. So now we've checked in. What happens next? Get that from there. There you go. Right? So you used Gary before. Some of you guys have seen this. So I updated some files earlier, obviously. Now what this is, is all the change requests that have come in, all the patches that have come in, and they're not actually in your Git repository. They're not in your main Git repository yet. They're still in the queue waiting to be checked in. So remember what I said earlier, how do you handle the traffic coming in from all the developers? This is how. You, 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 you gate it, you, you stop them from being able to check it in to the main repository that goes into Jenkins. And it works really well because you can have a verifier and a code reviewer. So if we go and look at uh, the one I just did now. Needs to be verified, needs code reviewing. How, are you guys at the back seeing this or not? How are you blind? Uh, it's cool, good. So you know, you got your, all your uh, author, committer, blah, blah, blah. So you can do a uh, div side by side. And you can see I added my uh, Trip. You can double click, you can add comments which go back to the developer. You can tell him you're stupid there. Um, it, it's really, really nice. It really will help you if you use Garrett. And each time someone checks in, it goes in here before it even touches the main Git repository that, that goes. Even if it's an unstable Git repository, it will help you catch the really stupid stuff. So I'll go back to all my open ones. Changed. Even says review in progress. Hey now. So I hit now. I have two accounts. I put up two accounts. I can. I've set up some permissions so I can review it myself, and I can even improve it myself. But I'm not going to, because basically what happens is that you would have two people, or you'd have Jenkins and another person. The first person would say, "Looks good to me." but I need someone else to approve it. This can either be Jenkins, which could be scary, but if Jenkins says, yep, the code's fine, it can approve it and say it's okay. However, if you just want two people, you know, publish comments, don't. And if we go to my, wow, where's my Firefox? It's gone. It's completely gone. Excellent. I'll just bring it up again. That was nice. Thanks, Firefox. Okay. So we'll go into my code reviewing again. I'll sign in. I used a Yahoo account for my second account. Hopefully it still mm -hmm. stayed signed in. Right. I can't actually sign in, can I? Hey, hey, hey. No, I'm not using the Drupalcon Wi-Fi. I've, I've had so terrible. How, how have you guys had with the Drupalcon Wi-Fi? It's been good. Yeah, it's been yeah, it's been that one, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Connect to my own. Hey, connecting. Waiting for. Sorry, this is going much slower than it usually goes. You know, live demo, crazy. Excellent. Weather is good. Sorry? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Let's try this again. Click. 
Come on. You're not mean, aren't you? My computer's being mean to me. It knows I'm doing something in front of public. And people have us. Yeah. So let's go just back to the normal one. <laughs> so if you had an excellent setup, you go review and you say, looks good to me, approved. Publish, submit, requires verified still. Interesting. So we can go and play around with. We can now start looking under the hood a bit. Access. Label verified. I'll move myself in there. Much easier. Go. Yeah. Right. That's how permissions in uh, Gerrit are done. Very easy. You can set up user groups. You can register people. You can add them to user groups. They get permissions. It's easy. I think I'm putting people to sleep. Excellent. My mission is complete. Oh well, forget that. In any case, it, you review it, you verify it, it goes into your main Git repo. Jenkins gets a notification. So there's a Gary plugin in Jenkins. It runs, it gets a notification, it does the build. So, I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm going to say that You've listened to enough to my voice now. I'm going to say thanks to the DrupalCon group for doing an excellent job. I'm going to say thanks to Drupal Association uh, for you know maintaining Drupal and community and etc. And I'm going to say thanks to you guys, the community, because without you, I wouldn't be standing up here talking to you now, would I? And without you, we wouldn't have an amazing, amazing CMS system. I did use. Flickr stuff, XKCD. Thanks. <laughs> Questions? I'm open. I saw some earlier. Don't be shy. I know you want to go. You can by all means. Yes? Uh, it's more of a statement. Sure. A question. Uh, you said that Yeah. What I found is very useful for even when it's one or two jobs. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. It, it, I mean, I do it for my own neglected, terrible sites. Right. Um, more my point is that you see most benefit when you have big teams. Because when you're just two or three guys around the table, it, it's not hard to talk to each other and saying, like, yeah, I did that thing to the code. Now, can you, you know, pull? I find it useful because I work a lot with the designer. Right. He's yeah. Not used to Drupal. He's not a Drupal view, but he's, he's a front end developer. Right. Yeah. Okay. And he doesn't. So all he has to do is log into Jenkins and build. And it's there you go. Yeah. It works. Yes. Right. <coughs> so do you run Jenkins on every commit? depends on how you have set up Jenkins. If you've set up Jenkins to have projects for every single little feature and every single little module you have, then yes, you do. Because then you get an instant response for that one module. But if you have Jenkins run the whole site, and if your site contains, you know, 400 modules, if they do exist, then no you have it check every 15 minutes or every half an hour and then you it will run then if there has been anything and it collects together a whole bunch of them right anyone else yep so you have like a preview environment so if you have a preview environment so as in you mean if so I'll just reiterate the question for the recording. If you have a preview environment, would it be heavy to run Jenkins every hour? Um, really depends on your setup. 
But if I'm understanding your question correctly, do you mean all the content that's in there? How do you migrate that across? Or right. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. No, because that's a kind of environment when it goes to the client. That's kind of a user acceptance. So Jenkins would have a task in its job to push to that server, but that would almost have to be a manual one. If it takes that long to build your site, you have to have a manual button in Jenkins. And when, when you're happy with the state of the code, you say go, and it builds that site. But having Jenkins run it every four to five minutes, unless you have a very split up environment where you have multiple preview servers and you somehow have a load balance in front that can choose which server that's just been built, just finished building, etc. Right? So when it takes that long to run against a preview environment, you do it manually. You go in and press the button manually. The project manager doesn't make it. Yes? Uh, well, one of the talks earlier this week uh, was on kind of that small differences with feature. They used features and an install profile. So what you do is you'd have two different install profiles, and you'd have it enabled in one install profile and not in the other. Uh, alternatively, you can do it in the thing scripts. You can have it enable module. You can have two different thing scripts that run on two on two different environments. There's several ways of skinning this cat of enabling disabling features and modules. Sorry, yes. Besides. <laughs> 